My name is Iris and I'm currently a mom to Hannah and a wife to Daniel and we have a baby along the way. I'm also a operating room nurse and I love just seeing all the gnarly surgeries at work every day. My name's Sam. Uh, for those of you that care, I'm a type 8 on the Enneagram, I'm an ENTJ, passionate about winning. Currently, I am married to a lovely wife and I am also an entrepreneur with a boba shop called Boba Shark. My name is Frances. I'm a creative multi-hyphenate entrepreneur. I am newly married and I am passionate about traveling, um, my dog Willow, and pruning my rose bushes right now. On this episode, we're going to be talking about marriage year one, the highs and the lows, the fights, communication, and all the fun things that come with it. Stay tuned. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of our podcast, the No Name Podcast. If you still have a suggestion for what we should name our podcast, please let us know. We still are looking for suggestions. So for today, we have a super exciting topic, which is about marriage year one. Um, I think this is such a fun topic, especially how all of us here are newly or have been married for a few years. Um, and today we also have two really exciting guests that are joining us today, Justine and Philip. Um, these are some of our dearest friends and we're so excited that they're here to join us for this topic. Um, so maybe um, what we could do is just go around and maybe share about how many years we've been married for. Um, so personally, I've been married for almost five years now and um, it's been, sometimes it feels so long and sometimes it feels like it was yesterday. Um, and how long have you guys been married for? About half a year now. Seven yeah. months. Seven months. Yeah. Seven months. Yay. It's been good. It's been good. The majority of it in the pandemic. Yes. Um, but it's been fun, I think. Yeah. Awesome. You mean all of it in the pandemic? <laughs> yeah, all of it all in the pandemic. It. Yeah, all yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they were the ones that made it happen during the pandemic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I've been married two and a half years. So, what, two-fifths of that in the pandemic? Okay. Um, we've been married, Adam and I, for four, about four months, so we're probably the most newlyweds here, I guess. I <laughs> also during it. the pandemic. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Love has no bounds. It happens no matter what. <laughs> yes. So great. Um, we're just going to get started today and just kind of want to find out more about what marriage year one looks like. I know this is always such an interesting time because, you know, you go through dating and then you go into this time where you're like living together and married and you just go through so many personal changes, changes as a couple, growth. And so we just kind of want to hear from you guys, like how marriage has been so far, living together and like all the fun things, all the crazy things. Maybe you guys can just kind of let us know, like, what's something that you guys like learned about yourself in this first year of marriage about yourselves do you want to go first uh sure i'm a bit of a control freak <laughs> um i like things when they're clean and i notice that justine likes things when they're put in the proper place mm. so i'll be more particular about like the kitchen or like this certain section of a table being dirty she'll be like why don't you fold up the blankets and put them in like the proper storage area kind of <laughs> yeah. deal so that's something that has been new to me in marriage for sure um i think time has been really interesting i think like the pandemic has changed the way i, I view time um i think i went in assuming that we would just spend all of our time together um and obviously we had to because we were in lockdown, but I think I also quickly realized that like, yes, we're married and we are one, but I needed to be my own one outside of that. Totally. Um, I think that was really interesting because we then had to coordinate our expectations around how much time we were spending together and if we were spending time together, um, as opposed to, you know, like being on video calls or playing video games. Um, or just watching TV. Mm -hmm. And I think even the way we view quality time and like spending time together looks a little bit different, mm -hmm. right? Like maybe we're eating a meal together, but we're not actually like connecting. Right. We're just together. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, no, actually that's something that's really funny because prior to getting married, Daniel and I were always long distance. And so when we actually got married in our first year, it was like, dude, after our first week of marriage, we're like, we see each other a lot. Like this is the most <laughs> we've ever seen each other, yeah. you know, because we were always separated and like the most time yeah. we ever spent together was like maybe on a weekend, you mm -hmm. know, when he would come back and visit. And so I think that's really interesting because time you're just like, you know, when you're married, you're like literally together all the, all time. the time. And then you're like, you know, I still am my own self, but I'm married and I feel like this is just such a weird dynamic to figure out and I that was something unexpected for myself yeah. to figure out as well yeah um, I don't know if you guys kind of felt the same way too yeah I mean I think being at home for sure because then when you eat together you're like oh what do we talk about <laughs> I saw you all day I already know what you did <laughs> there's nothing new that no color you can add yeah. to the experience that you had today whereas before I think if we were doing our own separate things like oh this happened today yeah but then now it's like, oh, yeah, I saw you have that argument with like your coworker yeah. or whatnot. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm kind of like Iris where I did a long distance relationship too. Um, and then he moved up like when we got married. But I think that like you, in regards to time, you actually can't escape this person. You know, like when you're dating, you have blocks of time that's your own and what's not your own. And like being married, you can't escape that yeah. person. Mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think it's also. Like the pandemic is like a special layer of it because we also can't do things. Like mm -hmm. we can't go mm -hmm. out, more like hang out with friends. Um, do the typical date stuff. Yeah, yeah. or like mm -hmm. even explore the new town that mm -hmm. we moved to. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, okay, how do we get to Safeway? <laughs> how do I get to Target? How do I get home? Like the essentials. <laughs> yeah. um, so I think that's also kind of been interesting to navigate because I think our personalities are different so what we need in terms of social engagement and interaction are also very very different mm -hmm. yeah yeah I think it's interesting because um, I didn't really have that issue of spending too much time with Justine. I think it was more so her saying like, you're all up in my space, like all the time. Like, yeah. can I get some me time? And the first six months were, were really just a process of figuring out what is actually meaningful, like quality time to your partner versus just like eating or sleeping together or just sitting on the couch watching yeah. something together. Yeah. yeah. So. I resonate with that so much, yeah. Just about like the allocation of time and like what's yours, what's shared, and like you know, yeah, yeah, the separation. Well, I mean, you also start playing video games more after getting <laughs> right. So, so that was like a constant conversation of like you know, like the first month, it's like, all right, how late can you play video games and like what time should I expect you to be in bed? But that was tough because we had like different sleeping schedules. So she would sleep at like ten. I'm like. Yeah. I also, I also like definitely we're still navigating <coughs> this, but I also mm -hmm. have this like thing about us going to bed at the same time. Totally. Um, <laughs> which is still a debate that we have, but we're making accommodations for it. But I need more sleep also just in general. And my, my work day starts earlier than mm -hmm. Phillips does. Yeah. He needs less sleep and his work day starts later. So if he, you know, gets caught up in a really yeah. good video game or something, then like I will be asleep by the time like he comes to bed. But I just had this thing about like, getting ready and going to bed together. And he was always like, but I'm not sleeping yet. Like, <laughs> I am not tired. Like, it was kind of like, you're forcing me to like yeah. go. He's like, but I'm gonna be up for like another two hours <laughs> in bed. And I'm like, but you will be next to me. <laughs> yeah. Really, so it's something yeah, about totally. it better, you know? Yeah. Um, so we're navigating it. There's definitely days where he like is doing other stuff. Um, and I'm also recognizing that that's important to me but maybe there are other ways that we can do that that aren't like him going to bed at the same time mm -hmm. every day. Yeah. Right. No, I'm totally the same. Daniel goes to bed way later than me. And so I feel like now over the years, I have like slowly gone to bed later and later until like now I'm just like, who am I? Like, I just go to bed so late. Like, I don't even sleep at these hours of the night. Yeah. It's super weird. Um, that's so funny that you bring that up. And so I'm curious, did you guys know this prior to marriage? Like, is this something like you guys like knew about each other? Like these like kind of like daily habits of like sleeping later or like, you know, waking up earlier. Like, cause these are just like very minor things that like maybe you kind of knew about 
prior to marriage, but didn't really know how much it'll affect you. Yeah, I think I think that's what it was. The the like being affected by it, right? Because when we were dating, it'd be like, okay, bye bye. Like <laughs> I'm going to sleep, and he will like stay up right. at his house mm-hmm. for however many hours. <laughs> um, I don't think I realized the effect of it. I also think there were. Th- things that came out when we moved in together that neither of us knew about ourselves. Mm. Um, Like, sometimes I won't clean the kitchen counter. Yeah. (laughs) He, like, does... That's not a thing. It's, like, not an option. I'll come out to get a drink of water, and all of the blankets are on the couch. (laughs) And I'll, like, in my, like, stupor, like, go and fold them and put the pillows back. It's kind of crazy. Like, in my head as I'm saying it, I know it sounds a little crazy, but, like... Do I do it still? Absolutely. Totally. I'm like, the blankets need to go in the baskets. <laughs> I bought them. They're supposed to go there. Um, please honor my system. Please honor my system. <laughs> exactly. And, and uh, like, we're working together, right? So we share a desk. Like, so, like, Philip and I are, like, on top of each other every day. We wake up. We, like, eat. And then we share one long desk. And there's six we're inches basically of space like this close. in between us every day while we're working. And I... Sometimes we'll go into the office at night and I'm like, why is the kitchen chair that you were using for your work day still in here? So I'll move it. Knowing full well that Philip will have to move it back the next day. This is just like weird idiosyncrasies that I'm kind of like, wow, what, what am I turning into? Like, where is this coming from? Yeah. Um, but I think like maybe that's the beauty and also the humor of marriage is that it brings out sides of you you didn't even know existed before. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, because in those scenarios, I'm I'm very much I guess in the kitchen table scenario. I'm more like Phil, where it's not efficient for me to have to bring it back and yep. wake up, come and, get the yep. chair again. Like if I'm gonna use it here, I'm just gonna leave it here. <laughs> exactly. Like why do I have to go look for it yep. later? It yeah. seems very back and forth, but. Yeah, there are definitely times that's like, oh, well, you know, we put this stuff here. I'm like, but I know I'm using this in a few hours. Like, <laughs> yeah. I'll get to it then. <laughs> yeah, the, the I'll get to it then resonates very strongly mm-hmm. with us because she'll ask me to do something. And I will get it done, but in my own time. But then, like, sometimes I'm inconsistent <laughs> and I still don't get it done. So, like, there are things where you expect your partner to be really consistent in. Like, like you expect Justine to always, like, put things in the proper places, right? But like those times when like they're not in the, in the proper places, I'm like, hey, like this was your system, and you're not adhering to your system. Like, what, like, what's going on? What's going on, basically? Yeah. So that is the humor, I think. That like, even though we're wired a certain way, it's not always like that. And God somehow just brings people, or in this case, two people together, and just makes it work somehow. Yeah. I think yeah. that's awesome. Okay, so you guys bring up like the super hot topic of cleanliness and organization, which is like the hot topic of marriage year one. Okay, so who is the cleaner person here in your relationship now that you guys have lived together for seven months? I know you want to say it's you, but (laughs) I'm going to say that it depends on the situation. Does that feel accurate? I mean, I mean... The PC answer is everything depends on the on the situation. <laughs> <laughs> In general, He's learned some the majority. The seven months. <laughs> I, I I would probably say Philip is the more particular <clears throat> one. Yeah. Maybe That's also accurate. the cleaner one. I feel unwilling to yield that. But then <laughs> I think that's probably In true. In general. I think I'm more organized. Though. Yeah, I'm messy. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Um. I, I do have to, like, give my mother-in-law, like, the biggest kudos and props, though, because growing up, um, one of Philip's chores was cleaning not just his bathroom, but also mom's bathroom and the downstairs bathroom. Mm-hmm. Wow. Impressive. So, like, he, like, cleaned, and, like, he, she also asked him to clean, like, uh, the stovetop. And, and I didn't like it, just putting that it out was, there. It yeah. was, like, a chore. It was, a, for sure, a chore, yeah. right? But now I just have to say, like, hey... We should probably like clean the bathroom this weekend. And like without hesitation, Philip's like, yeah, no problem. I'll clean it tomorrow when I get off work. <laughs> wow. Wow. Nice. Philip Chen will be hosting a master class on <laughs> his <husband's> training <laughs> in the near future coming your way. <laughs> um, yeah, but I, 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 I definitely like owe my mother in law a, a debt of gratitude for that. Um, I think it's also maybe like the habit was built but philip feels more ownership in our house so to him it's like yeah totally like i use the space i'm gonna clean the space and mm-hmm. take care of it 
Yeah, I, I had this like weird thing about ownership because I didn't move out of my parents' place until I got married. And for the longest time I told my parents, hey, like, I'm not really into cleaning this stuff because it's like not mine. Mm. <laughs> uh. Sounds really selfish, but it's like, it's not my stove. These are not my dishes. It's not my bed. But all of a sudden I move in. I'm like, all right, like I'm keeping like all these parts of my life clean. Like I'm, my mother would be so proud of me. Like, mommy, if you're watching right now, I wash my sheets once a month <laughs> on the dot. Okay. Like, yeah, it's weird. It's weird. Yeah. yeah. So how much of that, I guess, would you classify under organized versus classify under being clean? Because I think for me and Esther, we look at different scenarios differently. Like, I would say I'm cleaner in the sense that, like, she does yard work. So when she comes in, she's like, in my opinion, <laughs> filthy. And I'm like, yo, you need to shower, like, throw your clothes in, like, the hamper. And it's like, but I can still, like, rework. I'm like, that's disgusting. <laughs> like, oh, how would you do that? And then, yes, whereas sir. me, I'm like, oh, I sweat a little. My clothes are done. Yeah. Like, yeah. new set. Yeah. And she's like, but... You're wasting so much water. I'm like, but it's clean. It's like the clean thing to do. And then I think on the quote unquote messy aspect, mm. kind of like what I was saying earlier, I think I put things and I know if I'm going to touch them later, I just leave them out. Yeah. And But in my mind, I'm like, this is, it makes sense organizationally for me because I know where they are and I know I'm going to mm -hmm. use them. But then I guess if you, there's the argument that can be made that that's not necessary to clean because you're mm -hmm. not putting stuff away like as they come so I'm curious like what everyone else's I, experience in this realm is yeah no I definitely so I, the thing about me is I have OCD about like cleanliness like germs like hair <laughs> like just I I cannot do it like I just like start getting like you know weird so I'm definitely like the clean like on the cleanliness it's like I'm like Phil right where I'm like you where it's like clean is like being clean is so important but I have a clutter problem you know so Adam is like very good at like you know, creating systems like you just date or like putting things in the right place. And every time I'm like, I can't find this. He's like, if I put it away for you, you know? Uh, but it's funny because it's like, even before I came out of the house today, like he invited his friends over and I'm like, I cannot believe you did that because I'm like, the kitchen counter has like <laughs> stuff on it. It's like there's dirt, there's like, I don't know, a spill. So I literally like cleaned the whole house before they came over and he's like, why are you doing that? I'm like, because people are coming to our house. Yeah. Like I cannot let them see the mess. Or like mm. when the cleaning lady comes, I have to like clean everything. Everything. He gets mm -hmm. so upset. He's like, "Why are we like paying the cleaning lady?" <laughs> I'm like, "You're because, gonna clean." Yeah, but I'm like, because like if I don't clean, how are they supposed Monica. to clean my yeah, space? Yeah. <laughs> no, I no, I I for sure resonate yeah, 100%. with that. That's the second part where yeah. I'm like. Uh, who's coming? When are they coming? Yeah. Uh, are we cooking? <laughs> no. Okay. You clean this. I'll clean that. How? Like, what are we doing? Yeah. You know, what areas do I need to focus exactly. on? Like, are we gonna play games? Do I need to make sure? You know, like those sorts of things. <laughs> yes. And I'm not sure if that's like a hostess thing or like a. Mm, uh, your like image. Mm -hmm. um, that was something that definitely came out when we did premarital counseling. Mm -hmm. Was that I have like a huge. Uh, I think they called it like a huge need or desire to look and appear like right or like in my mind right in in front of other people and in public. Mm -hmm. Philip's like more casual, but <laughs> also I think Philip yeah. is like what you see is what you get. Right? Like, how he is, <laughs> I am with, who I am. Yeah, how he is with friends and other people yeah. is how he is at home. Maybe that's something to be said about me, but like, <laughs> so if people are coming into our home, then I feel like even more so, I'm inviting them into a space. Is it the right space? Mm -hmm. Is it welcoming? Does it create the right atmosphere? Mm -hmm. He's much more supportive of this craziness now. Like when we have <laughs> friends over, he's like, okay, yeah. let's go through your ritual. Your like your whatever, ritual. List, <laughs> whatever list you have in your head that we have to check off, you know, like, what are you making? Do we have all the ingredients? Like, when do you want me to help you? You know, and yeah. and I think those are the moments where I'm like, he is compromising for, for my sake, and I really appreciate that. Yeah. Um, but like, definitely is gonna be really interesting when we bring kids into the equation, mm -hmm. what that's gonna look like. Um, but that's that's something I think the two of us, for right now, we found like a good, <laughs> a good place. Good place. Yeah. yeah. I think that's like that's that's actually a fundamental thing about relationships, right? Is like understanding what's important to the other person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because just on like what you were just saying, it's like maybe he doesn't understand why you do it, but he knows it's important to you. Yeah. And so he'll like let you do it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Um, I think also in the past six months of being in the pandemic, 
Like Sam, you were saying, like, oh, yeah, I saw you, like, at an argument with your coworker, right? And then he will also see the aftermath of that, mm-hmm. how I'm feeling about it, how I'm processing mm-hmm. it. And what Philip does a really good job of is he just asks questions, mm-hmm. not about the situation per se, but he's like, how can I help you right now? Like, what do you need? Mm-hmm. Um, which is helpful for me because I, I describe myself as being a little bit emotionally constipated. <laughs> and that, like, I don't, I don't really know how to articulate my feelings. Mm-hmm. And so when he asks questions and it, like, gives me something to think about so that we're not just kind of both sitting there like helpless and unsure of what to do. Um, and I think it makes me feel like he doesn't he doesn't get it, but he's willing to accommodate and listen to what I need, even if it doesn't make sense to him, mm-hmm. even if he wouldn't do that. But he's like, if that's what you need right now, like let, sure, let's do it. You wanna get ice cream at 10 p.m.? Okay, we're going to get ice cream. I love yeah. it. That's very sweet. <laughs> I know. What a good hobby. So has, mature. Has Sam, did you do training. that? Yes. <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, it, it's taken me a lot longer. I think my my natural response is, all right, what is the solution to the problem? And I'm like, okay, let's just do this. But then over time, I realize Esther needs a lot more processing time. Mm. So then it's also like, okay, do you need me to help you process? Or do you just need time for yourself to process? And then I think in the beginning it was really hard for me because if I'm sitting there and she tells me, oh, I need time for myself to process, I'm like, but now I feel so useless (laughs) because I'm sitting here and my MO is like, let's go, let's execute, let's figure this out. But you're telling me to just sit there and not do anything (laughs) right now. So that was really tough. I mean, it still is. It's not natural for me to sit there. So I always have to kind of ignore my instinct of asking her, okay, or more or less like tell her, oh, I think this is the problem. I think this is what Mm -hmm. you could do to get out of said rut or whatever issue you're facing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so just different different approach. Yeah. Yeah. I I still like resonate with you on that because like that's exactly what I do. But like that whole feeling of uselessness because she'll just tell me like, I don't need anything right now. I'm like, (laughs) but I have the answer. Like I know what you can do for the situation and just like, sucks knowing that like that night's just like okay yeah. like you know like I'm getting yeah. yelled at and then, like, <laughs> and, like she'll like distract herself with like other things right but I'm like I know you're still upset about this one thing you know? so, like what do I do like what can I say but I think just like even throughout dating and marriage it's just a constant process of like trusting that your partner is gonna get to that conclusion mm-hmm. or get to that process yeah. somehow uh, and then trusting that they'll let you know mm-hmm. yeah because I mean good good on Justine because it usually only takes like a day or two. It's not like a week or two week long process. <laughs> it depends on the situation. It depends on the situation, but it hasn't been that bad yet. I, I'm sure there will be something in the future, you know, but so far. I, I think also the other interesting thing is that Philip, the way Philip engages with me in, in terms of conflict is very different from the way he engages with other people. And I would say the way that I engage with Philip in terms of conflict, like when we're arguing, is also very different from the way I engage with like friends or family. Like I'm very confrontational with my family. Mm. Like, I grew up in a, like there's three of us and if we had issues, we talked about it. All three of us, we hashed it out and then it was done, right? Then problem, solution, mm-hmm. execute. With Philip, I'm like the opposite. I like run for the hills. I'm not sure what it is. I just like. Well, you like, know what it is. It's, you, you don't want to talk about your emotions, like the emotional yeah, constipated thing. Yeah, it makes me uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but then like Philip and his like family and even with friends, if there's an argument or if he has like an issue, he's like, nah, I have nothing yeah. to say. There's, mom's the word. <laughs> but with me, he's like all about it. He's like, no, let's talk about it. Like, let's hash this out. And I'm just like, this is so bizarre. But like, I think in some weird way we flip-flopped it to a way that works yeah. right for both our outside relationships and and also for for this relationship yeah i mean you guys i don't think will have seen me be confrontational at, at like nope. all. i feel like this yeah. is only a special fill up for just seeing yeah. right for, yeah. i know because in our in our first i'm always like yo phil i think you should go talk to this person yeah. about whatever you're feeling yeah. right now and you're like oh Maybe if it happens again. I'm like, no, <laughs> just go. <laughs> because it will happen yeah. again. And then I know that Phil won't say anything yeah. then. I know you're not going to say anything next time, so just go now. Now you just have to say, imagine this is Justine. Yeah. 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 <laughs> All right, now, yeah, now. That's, that's the key. That's the key. It'll be for your well-being. Right. Yeah. Yeah. What about you, Iris, between you and Daniel? You know what? Um, when it comes to conflict, I am the one that is exactly like, I need time to process. 
Um, and I used to just like shut down. Mm -hmm. I just used to be like, I, this is overwhelming. I, I don't even know. I have so many feelings right now and I, I just can't process everything. And I would just like shut down and he'd be like, he's like a problem solver. Yeah, exactly yeah. like you, Sam, where he's like, okay, well, I already know the solution. <laughs> yeah, How can yeah. I fix it? Yeah. And I, and like now, you know, it took us a while, you know, yeah. to be like, God, now God. I'm like, okay, I don't need you to fix the problem. Yeah. I need you to listen to my feelings. And yeah. he's like, okay, then tell me your feelings. But I'm like, I don't know what my feelings <laughs> yeah, are. No, exactly. You know, like, hold on. Like, let yeah. me figure out my feelings. <laughs> and so now we actually set like a time frame. So like, I'm like, give me an hour, you know? Yeah, yeah. And like, well, like, let me think about what I'm feeling. Mm -hmm. And then we can come back and talk about it. But geez, that took us, I'm married for five years now. That took us how many years to figure <laughs> to come to this point of our relationship, yeah, you know? And this is, you know, it's like weird because, you know, we dated for a while prior to marriage and yeah. like, you know, we've had conflicts, but for some reason when you're in the same space and having conflict when you're married, it's so different. It is so different. Exactly. So different. And so that's something that I think I was actually surprised to learn about. I think also my conflict style when we got married was something that was unexpected for me. I think I realized, man, <laughs> I fight like my own mother. <laughs> like, like, I literally, like, we are a repeat of, like, my parents right now, you know? And, like, it's just so weird, you know? Like, as a kid, you're like, I would never fight yeah. like that, Mom. You're so, just so illogical, you know? And then now I'm like, I'm literally the same person, you know? And I sound the exact same, which is just so crazy, you know? Like, it's the weirdest thing. Um, but, yeah. So, okay, well, speaking of conflict, like, what is, the, what is the biggest fight that you guys have had so far this year? Or have you guys had any big fights? I don't think there's been a fight per se. The biggest like discuss like the biggest hot topic would have been I actually don't know. <laughs> oh, I thought you were gonna end that sentence. So I was like ready to respond. Um the house? No. I, I'm tempted to say the wedding, like things pertaining to the wedding. Mm. Um <coughs> We got engaged at the end of 2019, and I was, like, real excited or something. So I was, like, trying to get married in less than a year, 2020, right? Naively, like, well, also not being able to see the future. So we planned to get married August 2020. Mm -hmm. um, then the pandemic hit. Mm. Then it was, like, this – the conversations around do we postpone? Do we have it? If we have it, what does it look like? If we postpone, what do we do? Um and I, th I don't know if we were ill-equipped to have that conversation or make those decisions, but I think I definitely felt like rushed. I was rushed. I was excited about it. So I was like, like I felt at one point I was like, Philip, come on, let like let the, come on, let's get married. Like let's do this. Why are you not feeling as urgent as I am? Um, but we ultimately decided to have a small. <coughs> wedding mm -hmm. which Francis helped planned and it was beautiful and it was like exactly what we needed we are now planning to have like a reception like afterwards and it was interesting because I think I have a lot of PTSD around like the wedding now <laughs> and like, like planning it right. and like the family both sets of parents had like things they had feelings they have new feelings now mm -hmm. um, but we were sitting there we were talking about something the other day and maybe the guest list or something like that or like um who we were in, some something along those lines and he looked at me and he was like i'm really sorry that i wasn't there for more of this the first time mm. and i think when he said that i was kind of like uh, to, to be fair like in our relationship when we get into arguments philip apologizes first so him apologizing to me is like not new. it's not like new but when he said that i think it was like a moment for me where i was yeah. like Oh, like I feel seen. Mm -hmm. Like I, I feel seen. I think that it hasn't been like one colossal fight, right? But it's been like the undercurrent for the first six months of marriage. Yeah. Because we got married, yeah, but we always knew we were gonna have a wedding, mm -hmm. and I think we just took the rest of 2020 to like not think about the wedding. But now, now we're like starting mm -hmm. to get back into it, and I don't mm -hmm. think I realized how anxious it was the first go around right. until he said that to me. Yeah, I mean, I think all the tension there was just, like, uh, she would be really stressed from wedding planning, and I, for my part, I mean, I didn't help at all, necessarily. <laughs> and, like, that's when she told me, like, hey, like, I wish you could have had, like, a bigger role in, like, so-and-so vendors or guest list or whatever it was. And after going through, like, 
like a finance sheet, I was like, yeah, like <laughs> you hate math. I probably should have been doing I this. Math. <laughs> I hate math. Uh, <laughs> Budgeting. Yeah, and just like throughout the entire marriage, like tension about the wedding, like whether it was like in-laws or finances and who's going to invite what and who's going to accept what gifts or whatever it was. It was just like mm -hmm. an overcast kind of like cloud yeah. until we finally decided, hey, like we're going to postpone and then reset for the yeah. whole year. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, must be tough. I mean, just super uncertain and everything. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, and I think, actually, there's something Francis and I were talking about when we were like, I was like, Francis, are we doing this? Do I not do this? When is this? <laughs> <laughs> Francis just said to me, she's like, all right, just look. Here's the deal, right? She's like, tough love when you need it. Love is not canceled, is what she said to me. She's like, so however we choose to celebrate it, is not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. So now we just need to decide what we want to do to commemorate. And if that's a small thing, great. If it's a big thing, awesome. Just like we need to decide, but like know that the reason why we're celebrating is not gonna change right. or like disappear because it doesn't look the way you want it to mm -hmm. look. Um, I think that helped ground me and therefore Philip. <laughs> no, Philip was already grounded. Yeah, no, he was already grounded. No, 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 just the happy wife, happy yeah, life, right? It so. helped ground me in like why we were doing it. Yeah. And so then when all of the questions about, oh, why are you doing this? Or like, do you really want to do that? Is that the right decision? Then I was like, no, no, no. Like, I know why I'm doing this. Why we're, we're, we're doing this. Mm. Um, so that when the questions came and people pressed and had concerns, I could answer and be like, yeah, we are still gonna celebrate and do this and like we feel good about this decision it's safe for people um yeah but i think i needed that moment of wrestling to be like i don't want to look back on my wedding and have it be like almost tainted by everything else that has been so chaotic in the world mm -hmm. and like uncertain and scary mm -hmm. like that's not why we're getting married mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. What about your whole process since you had to do it? Oh, man. Okay, well, the process was actually really great. I think, you know, we kind of just took advantage of the pandemic and we're like, we're just going to do it, the two of us. So that nice. was awesome, you know? <laughs> um, and in terms of, like, conflict, though, like, man, we, we fight, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and we're both, like, very fiery personalities. Um, so mm -hmm. it, in the beginning, I was like, what is going on? Like, what what did I get myself into? Like, I'm not used to being surrounded by so much conflict and just the way that we are, it's like, uh, it wasn't in a, going in a good direction, we'll just say that way, you know? Yeah. Um, but then I realized, you know, fighting is like not necessarily bad, but mm -hmm. it's just understanding like where that person is coming from and then like over communicating about it, you mm -hmm. know? And I think one of the things that's like really important to me, and I don't know if it's because I watched it from a movie or whatever, or a book, but it's like, you know, don't go to bed angry. And I think mm -hmm. that's so important. Mm -hmm. I don't know if like you guys have fights that fester over, but I really try not to let that happen. Yeah. Um, I think that's important because then you get like a fresh start, like whether you feel like it or not, you just get a fresh start, you know? Um, but I think for us, like we fought a lot over priority and time, mm -hmm. you know, and just like what, he values in terms of time and prioritization versus like the capacity that I have. So I had to make like some adjustments there. Mm -hmm. It's still a work in progress, but I think that like to be able to communicate, like even like this week, this is where my priorities are. This is a super busy week for yeah. me, mm -hmm. just so that he knows yeah. like that's really important because it sets the expectation yeah. for yeah. him that he's not like just like waiting around or he's always in the beginning, he's always like, I moved up here for you and like I never see you and you have no time for me. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm like, how do I respond? You yeah. know, so yeah, I think just communicating setting expectations helps totally yeah no I feel the same way I think communication is so key because that's something that I mean we're like five, five years into this and we're still trying to figure out and I feel like the more I think about it I'm like you know this is gonna be a lifelong journey for us Daniel <laughs> yeah. like it's, we're never gonna really figure this out but hopefully we'll get better over time and I think we're the same way actually we hold that as principle where we try to not go to sleep angry um, although I think <laughs> <laughs> There's been a few times where I'm like, I'm so tired and I just fell asleep <laughs> and I woke up and I'm like, I'm pretty sure we never finished that conversation and I just fell asleep on Daniel, you know? Yep. And he would wake up and be like, yeah, you fell asleep literally in mid-conversation of us trying to figure out our conflict and what could I do? So I just went to bed, you know? And I'm like, I'm my bad. <laughs> And now I like really don't remember what we were fighting about, you know? And I'm like, I'm so sorry. <laughs> but if you want to resume, let me know, yeah. you know? Yeah. 
Um, but yeah, I literally don't remember the morning of. But I think, yeah, communication is just something, especially year one, like you said, like, I was like, I'm not used to fighting either and like mm-hmm. having conflict. And like in the first year, there's just so many different things that you can fight mm-hmm. about, whether it be cleanliness, which is a huge one for us. I, I know we kind of talked about it earlier, but Deanna and I are very different. <laughs> Let's just say in our priorities of cleanliness and messiness. Um, but communication time, value of time. I think we both were very independent people that, you know, had different values of how we see time. Mm-hmm also and so like valuing that and merging that together was truly like an act of god and we're still (laughs) trying to figure that out too um and yeah i mean it's it's still an ongoing process i don't know sam if you kind of have i mean i think like for me our first year of marriage was almost like four different seasons because i think so we got married september and then we had one month where neither of us were working so Mm. it, it was kind of pandemic like but we got to do whatever we want and we can go explore and do it so it was nice yeah and then uh then esther started work so that was like season two and so it was oh she's really tired now coming home from work she also has to get up really early and i think that's when we probably started going to sleep at different times Mm -hmm. because like I'm always a night out to begin with, and she's like, "Oh, I need to sleep by 10. I'm like, "That's not." <laughs> that's when I start my yeah, day. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, that's when I get the most energy yeah. to like do what I need to do for the day. So that's definitely not happening. And then the next one was uh, when Boba Drive opened, so that was like season three. And then, so I was at Boba Drive, I don't know, almost like 12 hours a day, mm-hmm. like seven days a week. And then finally, when I cut back on those hours, then it felt like, oh, this is actual marriage because now. Mm-hmm okay, how do we both deal with being tired from the day and now communicating and, okay, you're cooking, so I'll do the dishes, Mm -hmm. but I don't want to do the dishes now because we still have extra dishes Mm -hmm. we can use, so let's save these till tomorrow. (laughs) (laughs) There are things like that. So I think just it it almost like extended, quote, unquote, year one, but I don't know why. Like After year one, it was almost like a switch was flipped Mm -hmm. and the smaller things just don't, us as much or I think maybe maybe we've just both adjusted and acclimated to each other so much that mm-hmm. in a subconscious way that we don't even realize it so it's yeah. not as big of conflict points anymore but yeah I think communication kind of like what I touched upon before where oh she needs time but I think part of it was also me trying to help her like express that she needs time because up until that point I don't I think she knew it but she just never explicitly stated it so i didn't know that what she needed was time to process before we could actually dive deeper into the communication and then whereas i think for me if there's like an incident it flares up and then within a few minutes it's done i'm like oh i'm good and she's like how how are you still fine like i'm still like upset about what just happened and i'm like I don't know, like, it, it, it's over, like, I dealt with it, and, like, let's move on. She's like, no, we still need to talk about it. I'm like, okay, we can talk about it, like, when you're done processing. <laughs> just, just let me know. So I think, yeah, it's it just, like, a different timeline of how we process and just kind of the different aspects that go into that. Mm. Do you think it's just by nature? Because I feel like, you know, you guys, you mentioned processing, you mentioned processing. I'm also a processor where I also shut down with just like what Iris said in conflict. Like, mm-hmm. I just need time to like figure it out for myself. Do you think that's like just like a female thing or like, is that just like, it just so happens that the four of us like are like that? That's a good question. I think from what, like at least talking to some of my girlfriends, it feels like girls tend to just are more processors. I think maybe mm-hmm. we, Maybe just also the nature of like processing with women in general, we tend to express our feelings more so and we're like maybe better practice in that area. And so I think that's how we kind of like let it or outlet. I'm sure like there's a variety of women too. Not every girl is like that. Mm. But I think I tend to find that, yeah, that is a true thing. And guys are more like, there's a problem. I see the problem. Mm -hmm. And let me help you fix the problem, you know? And girls are like, no, I just need you to validate my feelings right now. Right. Yeah. Yeah, because then on the flip side, I'm like, that, that seems like such a waste of my effort. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, wait, so I just need to sit here and listen, and in my head, I'm thinking of, oh, but this is solved if you just do this differently, or like, look at this differently, but you just want me to say, mm, yes, I understand, or like, 
oh, I see, and then ask more questions, <laughs> even though in my head, I'm like, why am I asking these questions? You know, and it's so funny you say that, because Daniel has said literally those things to me, yeah. so he's like, so you just want me to sit here, like, genuinely, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. it wasn't like, he was trying to mock me, but he's like, yeah. so you just want me to sit here and affirm your feelings, and I'm like, that just sounded like the worst thing you could say <laughs> to me right now, you know, like, I guess so, but yeah. not really, you yeah. know, the fact that you just said that, yeah, not like, like that, not like that, yeah. he's like, so you just want me to say yes, mm-hmm, and I'm like, no, <laughs> but yes, but like, but realistically, yes, yes <laughs> right, yeah. it's just, you, you can't let it seem like you're just going through, which, like, I think we aren't, but I think it's definitely something that I've had to learn for myself, where, yes, okay, mm, makes sense, or if I don't get it, then I'll try to ask questions that might try to color it in yeah. for me, but then even then, I'm like, this is just over my head. I, I <laughs> our, um, our premarital counselors had a really good analogy for this kind of thing. Um, he told us that women have, like, God designed women to have and antennas. Yeah, like basically. intuition, basically. Intuition, then they can receive a lot more, not like sensory input, but they just, they just observe more and have a lot more feedback that they feedback. get, like input, yeah. And guys just don't really have that. So when they try to tell that to the dude, it might just seem like, what, like, what is this? It's just going over my head, like, what's the point of this? So mm -hmm. I think, especially in marriage, yeah. it's like a, the guy has to trust that there is something there that your partner is not crazy and you just kind of have to sift through it over time. I think, yeah, the, the <coughs> analogy was like that the husband is driving the car mm -hmm. and that the, the wife is like, the antenna like on top of the car mm -hmm. and so they're getting some sort of signal from somewhere but there's a reason they're responding that way mm -hmm. and the driver of the car doesn't see it mm -hmm. but they need to trust what they're getting from their partner mm -hmm. like it only works that way um another analogy i've had is like a kite and a kite flyer mm -hmm. there's always someone in the relationship who's like floating and like more visionary <laughs> and like dreaming and like <laughs> thinking long term and there's someone who's on the ground who's flying the kite right and they're connected right and they are a team but you need both you need someone to see really far in the distance and you need someone on the ground to navigate like the potholes and mm -hmm. the turns and you can't have one without the other and you have to communicate right. you have to trust the other person i think the processing thing for me i'm not totally sure I think um, one thing that was unexpected for me in marriage was the number of expectations that I had mm. that I didn't know that I had. That's good. Yeah. yeah. It's really difficult because <laughs> I'm like, I feel like I know myself pretty well. You yeah. Know? I'm like, okay, don't like tomatoes and I'm allergic to nuts. You're confident women, <laughs> like you know. Yeah, like I got it. And then, I know you know, <laughs> you go into marriage and there's all of these other things where you're like, wait, why am I upset with you? Mm. But I am upset with you. You didn't do something I wanted you to do. Right. Ooh, did I tell you I wanted you to do that? Oh, I didn't. So that's on me. My bad. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Um, and vice versa. Like, he probably has less unspoken expectations. <laughs> I have more. But... <laughs> But then the communication yeah. thing, right? It's like, I have, I need some time to think through my unspoken, unrealized expectations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry that you have to deal with the <laughs> aftermath of that, but like, let me process it so that we can like, learn this moving forward. Like, if I can't have the time I need to think through why I lashed out at you, right. or why I started spontaneously crying, like then I can't communicate it to you. And mm -hmm. we're just always gonna be in this like vortex of like the unknown. Mm -hmm. And I think for him, it's kind of like, I have the answers, like <laughs> this is the way, you know? <laughs> and I'm like, no, no, like let me, let me figure it out first mm -hmm. and then I'll decide if that is the way. Mm -hmm. Or we could decide together, but I, I I like at one point remember being like, I'm crazy. Mm. Like I have all of these things that I, I like Philip should be do should be doing. That was like the key word. I was like, ooh, should he be doing these things? Did he agree to do these things? <laughs> what are some examples? Um that you should take out the trash. Uh, That's like not something yeah. that I do. You take out the trash. Um <laughs> that the bed needs to be made in the morning. Ah. Mm. I get up first, yeah. right? So when I go into, I like Therefore, yeah. we'll flip it over, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. We also have like three blankets, like we're yeah. like high maintenance. Right? <laughs> sheet, the blanket, the duvet, you know, there's all sorts and of things. I got the pillows up there. I have two pillows per person. Oh, right. that's a big debate. There it is. That's a good one, Francis. 
I have this expectation that the bed will be made. Because right. I like to get into a bed that is made in the right. morning. Totally. He goes... <laughs> It wasn't like that when when we were dating. <laughs> He's like, you never made your bed in your old apartment. I'm like, this is a problem. Well, I'm now we're married. Now. Yep. now we're gonna do it. Um, let's see what else. Yeah, like some some I have some like kind of cuckoo ones like um, uh, like the blankets was one. Where, like, we had to go to Target three separate times for me to get the right blanket holder. <laughs> like, the right container. Yeah. yeah. It was, like, a journey. He was very patient and, like, sat through all of it. Um, and then I, like, needed... I, I didn't, it was just, like, weird, like, being in my own space. Suddenly, I needed to decorate a certain way mm. um, and have, like, certain things. And he was just kind of like, where is this coming from? <laughs> like, yeah, dating doesn't tell you squat. <laughs> <laughs> dating just tells you, like... <laughs> You have the same values, yes. but your opinions and whatnot totally change over like time, even like five years of marriage or yes. how you do yeah. things. But at least your values should always be the same. Yeah. 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 It's a process. But then there's a bunch of surprises yeah. that come yeah. there, one. Yeah. <laughs> that come out from nowhere. Guess, the woodwork. Yeah. That's the fun part. I mean, I, I enjoy always learning new things about Justine. Yeah. It's, it's been good in that mm-hmm. like... Um, Sometimes it's fun, you know? Yeah. Sometimes totally. Really Only, sometimes. Fun. Only sometimes. <laughs> Only sometimes. Only sometimes. Only sometimes. But, like, I, I feel, at least personally, that I've become a, more aware of who I am and what I need. Mm-hmm. And, like, that this is a safe space for me to advocate for that. Mm-hmm. Because he's, he's kind of like, okay, yeah, like, tell me what you need. And, yeah. like, I'll tell you what I need. And, like, we'll, we'll, t- we'll talk about it. We'll dialogue about it. And I think, like, that communication is key. But, like, processing is part of that communication because if i haven't processed it i can't communicate it with yeah. you no, yeah totally and i think you guys highlight marriage so well especially already in the seven months that you guys have been married in the sense that you know there's you go through like the deeper parts of like you know learning about yourself and learning about each other and building that intimacy with each other but then at the same time also balancing it with just like you know fun lighthearted things that you guys can do together and i think that's just the beauty of marriage is that you grow in intimacy in so many different facets Mm -hmm. with each other um so i know you guys have gotten married during the pandemic so we were limited in options but what are some fun things that you guys have done this year like have you guys gone on any like day trips, overnight trips? What have you guys done that's been fun? We went to Oakland for our six month anniversary, which was really fun. Um, Jack London Square. Nice. And like walked around. It was like kind of weird to think that that was like the first time we had like taken actually a trip <laughs> since we got married. Um, but it's, it's nice also because uh i think it gets us out of our heads a little bit um i would say that every day is an adventure with me but that's just me <laughs> right it is right it is i, I mean I, I think i think the the fun part is i think um i taught her how to play poker and like we didn't have chips and we're not gonna bet real money so we decided to bet like activities, activities. you know and like she doesn't know how to like bluff or whatever, so hey, I so uh, so I lost like oh, yeah, the majority. Yeah, 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 that's true. <laughs> bluffing. I want a bluffing. lot of activities. And you want a lot of activities, so like one of them was like a hundred dollar like sushi meal of like your choosing. Wow, wow. Oh, I know how to place my oh, bets. Yeah. yeah, buying a plant, a plant of, of my choosing, choice. Yeah, like, I got, like, these are good. I got like a fifty dollar yeah, so, plant. Yeah, I got like a fifty dollar plant. So I only got like two things, and she got like six. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So, the, so, so we have like a list written down, and it's just pending on when. She's when I cash in. Cash it in. Yeah. Yep. All nice. of my wins. Yeah. Or like a weekend trip, somewhere. I. On whatever weekend. I have been trying to bake more. Mm-hmm. I did successfully make banana bread the other day. I have yet to successfully master like good chocolate chip cookies. I don't know why that's so challenging for me. I think it's because you don't really follow um, the recipe. <laughs> so, so, so you know when when you get like one cup of flour, right? Yeah. You're supposed to like level mm-hmm. it. Level mm-hmm. it. No. Yeah. She she doesn't level. <laughs> He's below it. So my my mom and I baked all the time. So you know I knew that you should level. So when I saw my wife doing this, I was appalled. Yeah. I'm like, who are you? <laughs> The recipe says one cup, not one and like change. <laughs> just eyeball it, you know, just generally, <laughs> and then like I dump it. Just like, yeah, it's got to be a touch to it. 
So ever since she started leveling, you know, things have gone These better. Are, they have gone <laughs> a lot better. That's fair. There's a recipe for a reason. Um, we have also tried to see um, Phil's parents, like, once every two months. There have been, like, various, um, like, things we're celebrating. It was, like, uh, his sister came home for the holidays. We did that. Then dad had a birthday. And then in a couple weeks, Philip is having a birthday. Um, but it has it has been nice having at least one set of parents close by. Mm-hmm. Um, I think spending the holidays with his family was a little bit bittersweet for me just because, like, I didn't get to see my parents. But it was nice to do something different, totally, you know, yeah. to, to celebrate. Yeah. yeah. I think because it was a pandemic marriage, just pandemic <laughs> marriage. Like, it's a new term. Yeah. There's, like, we didn't have, like... I had planned to go on like a two-week honeymoon, like in Europe, Santorini, yeah. all the works, and then we just like went to Napa for a bit and stayed home. Mm-hmm. I think we just ha- really had to learn how to enjoy each other's company mm-hmm. in that time. And I don't know about you, but I can speak for myself. Mm-hmm. I enjoyed that part. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's fun for me just learning everything. Not everything, learning lots of stuff about interesting. Yeah, but we're definitely looking forward. We like started writing down all the places we still mm-hmm. have yet to go. Yeah. Um. So definitely gonna try and work our way through those when the world reopens. Yeah. yeah. How exciting. I feel like because you guys got married in the pandemic, you guys had like a super fast tracked version of year one of marriage. <laughs> because I think like you guys literally were stuck together. Like you guys say you worked together yeah. and you guys were able to spend time, enjoy each other's company, you know, the highs and the lows. And you guys literally like, feel like you're like really mentally part two, like marriage <laughs> year two of your wedding. Um, but I mean, I'm so excited for you guys. You guys have fun adventures ahead. You still have your honeymoon to go on. Yep. You still have your wedding to do. <laughs> <laughs> There's just so many more fun things to come, so many more moments of just growing and like, you know, going through conflict to like really build that intimacy. And I think that's really precious. So we just want to thank you guys so much for sharing with us today about marriage year one and all the highs and lows and just reminding us about what year one was like. Um, and yeah, we really appreciate you guys being here today with us. Thank you. Happy to be here. <laughs>